Uh, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining today. Uh, and I'm really excited with the opportunity to discuss with you the fintech innovation and overall the digitalization trend that I feel like extremely promising and for businesses, for people. And it's really nice that we have an opportunity to share with you where we stand in Russia uh, with regard to fintech development and fintech, fintech ecosystem development and um, uh, pr promoting these services. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I am the financial market professional with a uh, quite long background uh, in the uh, working in different banking, uh, in a financial institution, in, in prominent banks of Russia, uh, in stock exchange. And uh, basically, uh, also, I am a visiting professor for the High School of Economics, uh, teaching the courses and disciplines on MBA and master's program, such as corporate finance, portfolio management, uh, and a number of the strategic courses, like operations management and strategy. Um, today, um, again, back to the topic of our presentation, uh, I would say that um, nowadays we all observe how technologies, they transform our lives. And we could see that there are enormous opportunities for business uh, to cut costs, to establish and to build their really loyal customer base because there are new ways how you could interact with customers, how you could uh, run your marketing campaign and be really close to your customers and uh, also the perspectives is quite fascinating. So uh, my personal belief is that the fintech development in innovation in Russia is really unstoppable. We are also in the mainstream and today I would like to share with you where we stand, what have already been done and some really interesting uh, and exciting innovation that already been introduced here and probably some promising technologies. Um, let me um, announce the agenda. Uh, I am quite ambitious uh, on the topics that I would like to cover today. Uh, of course, we need to lay the background where we stand on the global arena when we talk about uh, fintech innovations. Therefore, we will uh, consider a couple of the global market trends and what services are in demand on the global markets. Um, the development of the financial technologies goes in line with the government initiatives and supports. For instance, we may think about the legislation, the need to provide some background for development of such services, because there may be many gray areas that a business may not appreciate because it's not safe environment. Therefore, the government needs to interfere. Uh, moreover, the fintech, um, very often associated with the online services and online means internet so this is also about the infrastructure that should be established on the countrywide scale um, for instance, we may also think about the demand from the side of the customers and uh, financial literacy here is also plays a really paramount role. Um, government initiatives that are aimed at increasing the level of the financial literacy of the citizens of the country uh, may really boost the development of the fintech uh, innovations companies and technology. So we will spend some time on covering that. Um, then will be the most uh, tasty thing, I guess, of our presentation when we focus on the really exciting initiatives that were really introduced and some projects that were launched. And just to say uh, a couple of the words uh, before we, uh, we will focus on this topic, we will be focusing on the initiatives that were implemented by the huge banks, right, systemic banks in uh, Russia, and also at some uh, startup projects like young creative people, they also like sparkling with ideas and what they already did to um, find their niche on this market. Um, for instance, when we talk about the uh, development of the financial system and any business, the ecosystem is paramount. So 
now there is no company that can now uh, function on its own without close links with the partners, with the governments, with the research institutions, with the research centers. And therefore, we will spend particular attention. Uh, what are the hubs and accelerators in Moscow that help um, to and that helps and support their financial startups to raise and even to uh, promote them on the international arena. And finally, of course, uh, it's nice to have vision what is expect into the future, and we will try to elaborate a bit what are the perspective of the financial services development in Russia, how fast they will be adopted by the population, and um, yes which services will be the most popular. So this is the plan for today and I'm keen to start. Uh, to start with, uh, I would like to make sure that we are on the same ground and we do really understand what the financial technology means. Uh, for instance, when we talk about the fintech and financial technology, technology, basically we start thinking about the business who promotes some services, in our case these are financial services, uh, with the huge um, usage of the software and some modern technology. Um, this is a really new sphere of how the banks and other financial institutions may interact with the customers because, and you I believe also, um, your life has become increasingly digitalized. So the way how you do business, uh, how you work, the way how you socialize, um, you spend most of your time online. So this is the new virtual environment who um, really is a nice and lucrative sphere for the banks to think in a bit different perspective about their customers and about the way that they can compete on this um, financial in this financial sphere. So uh, for instance, uh, if we talk about the financial technology and innovations, typically we could present it um, using this nice diagram. Uh, for instance, the most popular services may be connected with the money transfers or some remittances, remittances and uh, paying bills online. This is quite popular, everyone is aware of them. Uh, also, um, one of the particular need of the customers is uh, the lending. It might be short-term lending uh, or it might be more longer period lending such as mortgage or buying the real estate property. Uh, that is also might be delivered this service online. Um, another um, advantages and the area of the financial services, fintech services, is the capital markets because nowadays it's quite much more easier for the uh, citizens, for the customers, for the household to uh, start uh, or to open their brokerage account or um, for instance track some investment advice or even use the services of the wealth management or personal financial planning. Uh, life is extremely complicated and uh, of course, for instance, financial planning services is a really of the huge importance, right? And it's not only for the adults, but also for the young people uh, that everyone should be able to plan their, their finance, their budgets accordingly uh, to be really protected financially over the long-term perspective. Uh, for instance, the quite um, innovative uh, things that you also, that was like a hype uh, nowadays, it's um, everything related to distributed uh, ledger technologies, uh, blockchain, uh, crypto, uh, and the cryptocurrencies for, uh, for instance. Uh, this is also quite nice lucrative opportunities for business, for instance, for huge banks, it might be uh, the great cost optimization because this distributed ledger technologies means the data is protected and quite confidential data and sensitive data may be um, exchanged between the parties and this ultimately will give a really cost savings for the business. Uh, from the perspective of the customers that might be again for instance financial assets some uh, such as like different types of them a cryptocurrency like Ethereum, Bitcoin and uh, other assets and we will talk about them uh, a bit later. So um, we could see that the 
range uh, within which the financial technology fall into and the services that they may be associated with is quite uh, broad. And let's now move uh, further. Um, so uh, we are going to cover the global market uh, trends with regard to fintech innovation. Uh, I would like to introduce you um, a chart uh, and uh, would like to provide some comments how to interpret this. Um, to start with, may, we may even intuitively think that um, when the certain area is developing, so it basically requires the huge investments, right? Because, um, for instance, the technology, development of the software, um, I don't know, hiring people and all this stuff. Therefore, uh, the fintech in innovations we make or the path at which the fintech innovations are developing can be very closely tracked through the investments that flow into this area. For instance, the bars, they represent um, how much money basically was invested in fintech innovations globally. And we could see that over the last five years, the increase was quite, quite noticeable. Uh, for instance, by the end of the 2008, according to the consultancy.eu, um, investments in fintech projects uh, reached $120 billion. Uh, for instance, these investments, they flow uh, fro through the uh, venture capital firms, uh, private equity firms, and uh, some uh, uh, established players, they uh, get exposure to fintech area through the mergers and acquisitions deal. Basically, they just buy the companies, right, who they believe have a, a quite nice technologies, fintech technologies that uh, might be implemented uh, across the whole company, financial company or the bank. Uh, and also in bubbles, we see the number of the deals. So again, deals are related to finance in this activity. We may see that the number of the deals is also increasing. So this is a really nice um, trend. And uh, however, I also need to mention that some external factors also influence. For instance, uh, when we talk about the Europe, the fintech investments, they reached their historic peak. And the UK was really like um, the leading in uh, this race for investments in uh, fintech. However, uh, if we compare where the Germany and France uh, stands on fintech investments, they uh, a bit slow down their investments in comparison with the uh, previous year. So, but still, uh, probably it's a bit temporary trend because we could see that uh, the economy becomes increasingly digitalized. Um, let me introduce uh, some statistics regarding the uh, Russia's fintech market. Um, the figures um, was uh, presented by the Ernst and Young. Uh, they are not 100% up to date, so it's like two, um, year, two years back a statistic, but still it also gives a nice overview of where we stand and how this market is developed. So, uh, for instance, um, we could see the market size, apologies, and in rubles, but then I will provide you some statistics in uh, dollars as well for you to compare. It's around uh, 50 billion rubles. Uh, for instance, uh, we may also talk about the typical or average fintech company. Uh, the age of such company is about three years, and uh, on average, such a company employs 15 uh, people. Um, they work in, in these companies. Um, also, uh, total in the industry, uh, there are some estimates that a couple of years ago uh, worked around 4,000 people in fintech industry. And um, also, for instance, we may observe that the number of the clients is growing, both B2C, business to customer clients, like more than 100,000 clients and um, B2B clients. So business to business to huge organizations, like 350. So um, again, two years ago, the market is already was there. So the foundations were laid down. So let's uh, consider what's next. Um, 
Okay, for instance, when we talk about the investments that uh, fintech uh, companies receive or uh, about the, how many people work in these companies, we can't uh, basically understand quite well So, how the fintech technologies were adopted in the economy by the uh, customers, by the citizens, by the small and medium businesses. Uh, to answer these questions, uh, the EY uh, start in 2015 developing a quite nice uh, index. It is known as Global FinTech uh, Adoption Index. Uh, this index, uh, the methodology is that it is based on the consumer surveys. Uh, for instance, around 27,000 of the online interviews were conducted with the adults who use um, or somehow have access to the digital services, the digital pro platforms. Uh, they uh, consider the, uh, how, how active these adults use the services. Uh, overall, they assess the 19 uh, services which fall into five categories. For instance, just to give you an example of the services that also were considered, it's um, online for an exchange. Um, it's if the customers um, or, or this basically respondents use online only banking. Uh, these are peer-to-peer -peer payments, uh, cryptocurrency and e-wallets, uh, lending to peer-to-peer -to -peer platforms, uh, online stock brokering and uh, different uh, platforms and aggregators that are used or everyone can use in order to find the best price for the certain uh, particular services. So some comparison marketplaces. Um, and for instance, we could see one uh, noticeable thing that uh, we could observe here is that um, the first time when this index was calculated in 2015, the index stood at the 16%. However, uh, in 2019, it's raised to 64. So just four years passed, and we see such a huge um, as, as progress on that. Um, also, uh, there is a very nice statistics uh, that uh, EY um, gathered across the countries. Uh, for instance, this chart illustrates or different countries are ranged uh, according to their uh, adoption index and uh, from the countries with the highest adoption index to the least adoption index. And we can see that uh, on the top there is Russia, sorry, China, India and Russia. And um, this index for Russia is quite high, 82% in comparison that on average globally, the index is uh, 64%. So if you are interested in methodology, I strongly advise you to um, go to the website of the EY and learn more about how this index is calculated. But what it really shows is that this trend is really unstoppable and all the countries are involved and that some countries are more proactive in adopting and more quick in adoption the certain technologies and more responsive to the innovations that were offered by the financial companies and banks to their customers. So this is really nice uh, trend. Um, the fintech uh, innovations, as I said in the very beginning, um, should also go in parallel with some initiatives. Uh, at least we may talk about the legislation and fill in the gaps. Uh, for instance, one of the gaps is what the crypto asset is, right? how to define it, what the token is. Uh, because in some jurisdictions there is no the good legislation in place and this means that the business and customers are not 100% um, protected when they are involved in such uh, transactions and deals. And also, for instance, a development of the infrastructure and for financial literacy is something that uh, may be the okay, responsibility of the government or at least it should, it should be facilitated on the initial stage by the government. Um, now I would like to talk a bit about the uh, government initiatives in Russia that speed up the fintech innovations. 
Uh, to start with, I would like to pay attention that uh, in Russia, the program, the Digital Economy National Program was developed and it has um, some priorities on, uh, for instance, which the key idea was to improve the life of the people, uh, improve the way we do business and uh, okay, create a really competitive advantages for Russian business and for Russian citizens on the global arena through the digitalization of the economy and the social life and increasing the efficiency. Therefore, uh, for instance, uh, there are a number of the initiatives that fall under umbrella uh, and uh, are one uh, are among the priorities that were set in this Digital Economy National Program. For instance, uh, one of the priority is the rapid internet expansion. Uh, for instance, the ambitious goal was like by 2024, the internet coverage uh, and internet penetration rate should exceed or be closer to 100%. So we could see that 87% is a quite ambitious uh, target and uh, many things have already been done on that. Uh, another key area is um, improve their financial awareness uh, about their financial service, about how to integrate the um, budget management and financial planning in the life of the ordinary citizens. Uh, for instance, some of the projects are run by the Central Bank of Russia. For instance, there is the initiative so-called the Financial Culture. Um, this is an online resource where you can find the basic information about um, okay, financial services, so you may improve your level of the financial literacy and to learn more about how financial markets are function, function and okay, some specula specul peculiarities of the different financial services and risks associated with them. Um, another project that is also run uh, by the Central Bank of Russia is the set of the open lectures uh, that are delivered by the specialists of both the Central Bank and the financial experts. And here I would like also to say that universities are quite engaged in these initiatives because on the um, uh, facilities, using facilities of different universities. They also provide some open lectures for everyone who is interested on the different topics of um, financial markets and financial services. Um, another uh, area that is extremely important is the support of fintech startups because uh, you may know that uh, the failure rate for startups globally is quite high. Um, it's like 15 to 20 percent or even less of the startups, they um, survive uh, the initial stages of their development, but most of, this, of them fail. Therefore, uh, the different programs that support them, such as uh, accelerators, incubators, like hubs and platforms that helps to connect the uh, financial companies, banks, with uh, some uh, creative, enthusiastic people uh, to test some ideas are uh, very, very in demand. Uh, for instance, here we could see, I will talk a bit later about that, uh, some platforms uh, are highly supported, like FinTech Lab, for instance. And uh, also over the last time, we observed uh, a quite um, a quite nice improvement uh, regarding to the talent pool development and training because again uh, developing the fintech and digital business requires the professional with a certain expertise and uh, many universities like top universities uh, they uh, launched uh, different types of the projects. For instance, Lomonosov uh, State University also launched uh, the program related to data analysis and uh, management, like a digital uh, implementation, uh, digital technologies in um, companies. High School of Economics has very nice master programs and bachelor programs uh, with regard to this topic. And uh, also there are some joint initiatives between the uh, um, physical or how to put it, about technical universities when they uh, partner with the top economic universities. And uh, on this uh, cross 
collaboration emerges the new ideas. Um, so we could consider that over the last time we observe a number of the programs, um, particularly based on fintech innovations and the digitalization of the economy, were introduced by the top leading universities, both on MBA programs, master programs and bachelor programs. Um, also, uh, some challenges are created uh, by the technologists themselves, uh, not only opportunities that they provide, but challenges as well, as well. So, for instance, the market participants, the professionals, they really believe in remote identification and the potential that it could give, give to the um, uh, development of the banking and financial services. Um, so, for instance, what work has been done so far is that um, nowadays the law uh, was established that created the legal framework for remote identification. And a bit later I will provide a number of the examples how the banks already introduced this remote identification and partner with the retail stores to um, to make it possible for the customers to make purchases based on this remote identification uh, technologies. So, uh, for instance, um, also some work uh, has been uh, done on them or in the area of the distributed ledger technologies. For instance, uh, it should be clarified what the digital financial asset is, um, okay, the definition of the token, and also set, set the background for the cryptocurrency, um, uh, cryptocurrency sphere, okay, so some legal environment for that. Uh, now the work is also like is, uh, is under the way. Uh, for instance, uh, some of the national projects and high-scale projects are connected to, to tokenization. For instance, um, there is underway the integration of the international card payment system and mobile contactless payment services. Uh, big data is also viewed as one of the key priority and it is developed under the digital economy program that I mentioned uh, just a couple of the minutes ago. Um, also, I would say that the Central Bank of Russia has become a very prominent uh, player on the uh, fintech uh, environment. And uh, Bank of Russia initiates some really interesting things, for instance, uh, building the um, uh, fintech marketplace, uh, also like developing the single biometric identification system and a number of other Project. So, for instance, sometimes we feel like the government authorities, they are a bit lagged, late, they are lagging their businesses, the pace of how the commercial institutions develop. However, here we could see that um, governmental and, um, yes, so with the government participants, uh, institutions, they are quite proactive and uh, with the different projects with regard to financial um, uh, fintech technologies. Um, it's very important for the uh, development of the in innovations that build in the ecosystem and networking because it uh, gives the extra opportunities for I don't know, finding the right partners, finding the right people, uh, and uh, one of the really huge scale conference that now start delivering annually is Finopolis. Uh, the last uh, Finopolis conference was just uh, delivered a couple of years sorry, a couple of the weeks ago, just in the beginning of October. You can see it's like 9th to 11th of October. And um, for instance, the core mission of this uh, Phenopolis is, um, yes, to facilitate the introduction of the you know, innovative technologies in the Russia's, Russian sector. For instance, in 2017, they also launched a quite nice initiative, um, so-called um, Phenopolis for the Youth, uh, when um, students and um, scholars uh, can meet uh, they have uh, they had master classes uh, from the experts in this sphere. They worked as a team. They collaborate. So um, everyone understands that 
uh, new creative uh, young people should be supported and mentored and um, okay should be well connected that they have really nice opportunities for the future and they could contribute when they will grow and join any companies or probably establish their own. Uh, for instance it's really nice uh, to observe which topics were covered during the, this Phenopolis uh, for instance um, starting with the re regulatory framework for fintech innovations, also the issues with cyber security and uh, risks and hacker attacks and safety of the uh, fintech services. Um, for instance, problems with regard to digital um, identification of the customers, uh, new opportunities for small and uh, medium-sized businesses, uh, blockchain, crypto assets, digital currencies, and uh, also one particular focus was on the artificial intelligence. For instance, um, for instance, uh, when we talk about the uh, artificial intelligence, and probably one more uh, interesting theme like uh, augmented reality or uh, virtual reality, uh, it's already, for instance, uh, introduced um, to train the personnel and staff in Savings Bank of Russia. Uh, for instance, uh, I personally tried this virtual reality um, mask uh, and the key idea was to make me feel like a very old person who is like 60 or 70 years old that has problems with its health, that uh, does not hear quite well, that does not see quite well. And how do they feel when they interact with the people in the bank office? So this uh, technology has really uh, helped to create the bond between the clients and the personnel and uh, yes, increase the level of the customer service and um, retain the key clients. So I find it's quite exciting. Um, if we are talking about the uh, forecasts and uh, growth of the different segments uh, for fintech innovations in Russia, uh, particularly they are associated with the three segments, payments and remittances, uh, financing, this means like you are able to obtain loan online, and well management services. And we could see that the forecast by the 2035 is quite promising. For instance, 86% uh, of the uh, transactions in Russia are expected to be performed using these uh, innovative services and making payments online. Uh, for instance, about the 40% of all the loans provided are also expected to be done through the uh, financial service platforms. And um, more and more people will be involved in uh, wealth management and uh, most of the services again will be provided online. So the figures are quite promising and my belief is that they may not even be overestimated because what I see now, the market is quite dynamic and uh, there are many, many uh, both companies, uh, banks and uh, individuals who are really passionate about uh, learning more about the fintech and really exploring how this uh, financial technologies may do good for business, for clients and for, okay, for, for the country. Um, let's now uh, move to the most tasty part of the presentation. So I'm going to talk about the uh, different types of innovation that were introduced. I find it's quite nice, probably in your countries. Um, there are also some interesting things that we don't know about, but uh, still it's um, really exciting to observe what have already been done so far. Um, First of all, I need to tell you that um, no, or many in fintech innovations are implemented by the huge banks. And this is also like understandable because they don't just passively see it and see how their um, new fintech companies, they grab business from them. Right? They are not like passive observers. They do really understand how life is changing, how the competitive environment is changing, and they uh, has already been start, have already been starting doing some preventive steps. 
so what I mean, I mean that they uh, hugely invest in technologies. And because these banks, they are huge, uh, they have a huge customer base, uh, they have the possibility of do this, to devote um, huge budgets on uh, financial technologies. Uh, therefore, uh, some of my examples will be um, what uh, fintech innovations were implemented by such banks as Ser Savings Bank of Russia, uh, VTB Bank, Tinkoff Bank. Um, if we consider the whole picture, uh, among Russians, the most um, uh, the most popular financial technologies that are developing very rapidly are payments, money transfer, and online lending. And uh, for instance, if we consider different types of the technologies that banks and financial institutions and new fintech firms are focused on, these are mostly artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, uh, predictive analytics, uh, deep learning, and big data. Okay, so uh, let me introduce uh, the online only bank, uh, Tinkoff. Uh, this bank does not have any um, brick and mortar branches in um, in Russia and basically in other countries in the world. Uh, however, it's quite um, it's quite success. Sorry, it's quite successful business model that uh, proved itself to be viable over the uh, years that uh, it uh, like operates on the market. Uh, for instance, the nice trend is that you already know such assistance as. Um, okay, okay, Google or Alice or I don't know, some other assistants that can help you navigate your iPhones or some other devices. And here this technology uh, is used and the Tinkoff introduced so-called the personal assistant Oleg. So hi Alec. Um, it is believed to be a man uh, aged somewhat between 25 and 40. And the, um, okay, so functionally what this assistant can do, uh, he can recognize the customer using by biometric data, for instance, voice identification. Uh, of course, the recognition of the different user comma comments. Um, so, um, asking follow-up questions to clarify what should be done. And of course, uh, also for instance here, we could see that um, it's also speaking on the variety of topics. Uh, if we are talking about the services, one noticeable uh, idea that now is becoming more and more popular is that when banks introduce something new for their customers, they not 100% focus on the financial services only. Right, for instance, we could see, yes, that yes, Oleg can help you to manage your financial products and also like do some money transfers, but also the huge part of what uh, of uh, his service that he may offer to the customer uh, is connected to the lifestyle of the customer. For instance, to make uh, the life uh, of the customer easier, not from the financial perspective, but some uh, okay day-to-day -day life. Um, restaurant reservation, book beauty salon appointments, buy cinema tickets, search for discounts and products. This is really prominent because um, many banks they start uh, recognizing this concept that um, to that they need to reassess their place that they play in the life of their customers. So it's not only about okay, we are like uh, serving the or meeting their financial needs. Uh, no, they start really being engaged in providing extra services other than financial services. And this is really interesting trend that we could observe that many banks start leverage on. Um, for instance, another initiatives of the Tinkoff Bank is that they try to hook the customers um, based on uh, their engagement on the social network um, environment. For instance, uh, one of the services that Tinkoff Bank provides is uh, the brokerage account that you can open. Uh, basically, uh, yes, as a client, you can open the brokerage account to get an access to the stock exchange and make some deals, um, buy and sell stocks. And for instance, it is possible to do this from the uh, mobile application Tinkoff Investments. 
And one of the interesting uh, additional thing uh, for this uh, Tinkoff investments is that they also introduce the opportunity to socialize, to meet traders, uh, to follow some investors, to communicate with each other and discuss travel idea, or sorry, trading ideas, and even um, okay, make new posts. Uh, for instance, we could see that everyone now is fancy about the okay, be like a social um, exposed. Uh, I mean, like posting some photos on Instagram or Facebook or some other social platforms. And they also use this as a nice marketing um, trick, I would say, that uh, they um, provide the opportunity for their uh, investors to post photos and video functionality and also uh, being engaged in some uh, gamification. Right. This is also very powerful for attracting customers. When for quality contact, they may get some bonuses or some really nice uh, perks uh, from the bank. Um, I would like also to provide you some statistics with regard to uh, how this model works uh, for Tinkoff. I mean, um, Tinkoff Investments mobile apps. Uh, for instance, there is a really stunning statistics that the Moscow Stock Exchange uh, last year acquired 700,000 clients and around 300,000, just okay, more, roughly one third or even more than one third, uh, were coming to the Moscow Stock Exchange through the Tinkoff Investments application. Um, also, we, uh, for instance, um, there is the statistic that one in three accounts on the Moscow Stock Exchange was also opened through this Tinkoff Investments mobile app. And um, the scale of the popularity and the adoption of such services among uh, people become very evident. Uh, if I give you one example, just in uh, one month, it was December 2018, uh, this platform's mobile application attracted one and a half million devices, right? So, uh, okay, over the December only, uh, the mobile Tinkoff Investments app was installed in 1.5 million devices. Like this is really mind blowing. So um, this is a nice example how the um, approach to engage customers on the through mobile application and some socialization really work because it uh, helps to address the wider uh, the wider needs. Um, particular. Uh, opportunities, uh, financial technologies they provide and innovations they provide for small and medium businesses and some banks they start uh, exploring this uh, field. Uh, for instance, uh, VTB Bank um, is focused on the um, small to medium businesses uh, which somehow engaged in the supply chain finance. And for instance, based on their platform, they will be able to um, uh, to get some uh, loans based on their factoring contracts. So, for instance, uh, this segment is quite promising. Uh, the procurement segment is estimated like 500,000 participants and um, the financially, these commercial online loans are estimated is 15.75 billion, um, I guess, rubles. Uh, in uh, per year. So um, this is an example that the technologies, they are not only focused on the uh, retail segment for huge institutional um, like investors and corporations and businesses, but also it's quite promising for small to medium enterprises. Um, a bit later, I will introduce some projects that basically were launched as the software that helps to uh, small to medium uh, enterprises manage their accounting or for freelancers make it easier to pay their bills, fines, uh, taxes and all this stuff. So this is a quite nice niche. Um, here I have a number of the titles from the newspapers, okay, like 
um, uh, that I googled online, uh, they provide a very nice um, context on again what do banks do and what are the projects that they are currently engaged in. Uh, for instance, two well-known banks, as Savings Bank of Russia and Gaz Gazprom Bank, they now partner with the company to test their, um, and integrate the biometric um, recognition uh, in, um, I don't know, and test different technologies where it could be used. Uh, one of the very interesting projects that has already been uh, implemented is um, the um, partnership of the Sberbank and the supermarket retail chain Azbuk of Kusa, so it's the food retailer. And for instance, now you could enjoy, you can just buy your milk um, using your fingerprints and uh, secret words like passport, so you don't need to keep uh, credit card with you or your mobile application to pay for the uh, food. Uh, so this could be done uh, just with your fin fingerprints, right, Bi biometric data. Um, for instance, so far, as far as I remember, it was like uh, 20 terminals uh, in different supermarkets of Azbuk of Kusa chain, but this project is ongoing and they uh, really aim to expand significantly the number of the biometric terminals where customers may pay. Um, another very interesting, um, a very interesting project is introduced by Ross Bank. Um, okay, for instance, Ross Bank uh, used the neurodata technologies, uh, and for instance, they scan, uh, they scan uh, their, um, what customers say and how they interact with their call center, and for instance they um, testing the technology of the emotional recognition. So how do customers feel? And for instance, at the result of this analysis that is done in the real time, the customer satisfaction index is calculated. Again, it's very quickly, just in real time online. And uh, this information is uh, very quickly provided to the management that they may uh, somehow assess the key point of pain for the customers, what should be improved from the perspective of the services that they provide, or probably um, introduce some motivation and training for their employees that they are able to serve the customers on the high, uh, the more, more efficiently. Um, another, uh, another area of the, um, uh, how do put it? initiative that um, banks are engaged in, and particularly Savings Bank of Russia, is that they uh, create a really strong ties with the newly emerged startup companies. Uh, for instance, in 2018, they launched one initiatives, and as is put here, there was nothing similar to this before. Uh, when Sberbank partnered to um, global company 100 Startups, and they launched the program where through this program 25 strongest team uh, which are focused on either fintech, e-commerce, uh, cloud B2B services, big data, um, virtual reality, artificial intelligence, blockchain and some other projects. They were selected. Um, they were provided with the funding, uh, for instance, on average, each startup received $145,000. And also, uh, they had a really nice opportunity to um, communicate, um, okay, not commu to, to communicate with the industry professionals to be taught and um, in, be engaged in the master classes. Also, they were able to promote their products through the ecosystem of the Savings Bank of Russia, and some of the winners were sent to the Silicon Valley, where okay, they could uh, really present their projects um, to global investors and to Russian investors. So, um, through these initiatives, the, the Sberbank basically also looks for some new lucrative ideas that could be implemented across the whole bank. But also, this is a really nice, um, uh, a really nice, uh, um, how to put it, 
um, initiative that um, boosts uh, the development of fintech companies and stimulates and motivates creative people. So this means that we could see demand from the even established market participants for new ideas. And for young uh, people, this is a really strong motivation that they should, okay, do their best, um, come up with ideas and probably they will, if idea is nice, they will be able to get some support from either market participants or government or some really established um, players on the market. This is really motivating. Um, now I am from the huge banks, I'm shifting to the startups projects. And uh, for instance, um, as an example, I would like to introduce the company, uh, which the name is The, the Way. And uh, what these uh, guys do, uh, basically they have an expertise in artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, they also uh, are experienced in aggregation of the lives, of life, lifestyle data on the customers. And also they do lifestyle analysis and behavioral psychology. I would say that they are quite, um, uh, quite, um, how do I put it, successful in identifying the right trends. Because, uh, for instance, here we could see that the starting point of promoting banking and financial services is not to uh, promote banking and financial services. Uh, they're really, uh, reassess the approach to uh, approaching the customers and they start with engaging uh, with customers uh, based on their understanding their lifestyles, their priorities, their needs other than financial needs. For instance, uh, they um, do the huge data analysis and they try to identify some patterns of the behavior and the lifestyle uh, which helps them to interact with the customers on the everyday market and provide small value but everyday. For instance, there may be some uh, personalized stories, um, there may also be where to go ideas, uh, shopping ideas, best price the most interesting place to go are some emotional introduction and emotional talk because even in spite that um, okay the world is overcrowded sometimes we feel really lonely and this is also a very strong point to engage with the customers to yes to start just talking with him and uh, also yes some uh, heroes some role models that uh, the customer may be really interested in so, for instance, this um, approach really brings the banking and financial industry um, upside down. For instance, we could see that the typically uh, we may talk about the doing banking as usual. It's like the using standard data on the customers, what they pay, how they pay, uh, and okay, how much money do they keep on average monthly on their account and so on and so forth, how regularly they receive their salary and they keep that on the account for how long and try to provide just standard banking services. But then uh, the concept is moving through the really like behavioral banking. And for instance, we could see that the um, really breaking through approach and business model if you start understanding and gathering information uh, not about the financial patterns of the behavior but also like understanding the life code or DNA of your customers and this will help you to be connected with this on with the customers on the daily basis right so here the lifestyle advices come first and money management second uh, also, key pillars are emotional and proactive talk and micro value every day. So this is really, um, I would believe in this concept that engaging with the customers can provide the real huge perspective in competition and winning your customers uh, because it helps like really not just to target and promote the financial services but really incorporate the financial products into how the people 
okay, live basically, right? How they make their decisions, what they need, what are their plans for the future, what do they need every day. Um, now we talk, uh, we move to the, uh, a couple of the examples of the different startups in Moscow. Uh, for instance, here we could see that it's around by the August of the 2018, there are right about 200 tech startups in Moscow. Some of these companies you already know, such as Kaspersky, well-known um, company that provides security for the software and some other services. Azon is a retail online shop. Uh, City Mobile, um, car service, uh, EV, streaming, videos, and uh, some retailers like Kupivip and La Moder, and car price, uh, okay, the auction for the cars. So, but these are not fintech companies. Uh, however, uh, again, by the uh, summer of the 2019, we, we may talk about uh, around 288 fintech startups. Uh, most of them are based in Russia, but oh, sorry, based in Moscow, Russia, but also uh, some of the startups uh, more and more they emerge in some other regions because in so called the special economic zone that provide them uh, special environment, um, tax releases, and um, some really nice opportunities and connections to do business there. Uh, for instance, just to not to uh, spend much time on covering uh, the business model of each startup, I just outline what uh, the niche they uh, focus on. For instance, uh, my business uh, is the online accounting for small businesses, which really helps uh, the small businesses to manage their financing. Uh, also, very popular is PayQR. Uh, this uh, mobile application helps to drop some intermediate steps and make your purchase experience more streamlined and quicker, basically just based on the scanning your QR code of the product. Um, also, for instance, um, some solutions that are based on the prepaid card without opening bank accounts. And uh, for instance, when you could um, obtain loan very quickly doing this online. For instance, also uh, many or some of the fintechs are focused on the microfinancing market. And uh, for instance, online uh, solutions, they provide really um, nice opportunity because they could be uh, connected with the companies who uh, perform scoring for the, their clients. So they may, in online, they may uh, quickly assess and assign their uh, credit ratings to the particular individual or business. And this information could be, again, quickly um, transferred back to the uh, company who provides these online payday loans. And this um, Again, the uh, process of the improvement of the loan becomes very quickly. Of course, as for the microloans, it's a bit tricky area because uh, some social issues involved in that, like a um, really huge amount of the burden and that not uh, many customers are financially literate. And therefore, uh, there is some legislation that also is introducing to protect customers against uh, being really much in debt. Um, another uh, examples of the fintech startups are car money. Uh, for instance, they focus on if you have a car, you can again obtain the loan online uh, based that you like an owner of this car very quickly. Some of their companies, they focus on the decentralized protocols for application development and token management, or uh, they also develop blockchain platforms um, and create like even open platforms and uh, such a kind of the solutions which address this new uh, trends in uh, cryptocurrency, uh, open IP technologies and some other stuff. And uh, Anna, for instance, this is a solution for uh, freelancers or small businesses which helps that is a really accessible via mobile phone and it also helps to manage uh, the finance of the 
small business in a quite efficient way. You could see that some of this, uh, the, all these startups, they got a quite nice financing and funding from the private equity firms and uh, some accelerators and investors. So um, this means that they have proven that ideas that they represent is viable. So um, another and the um, uh, next part that I'm going to cover is to introduce you to the different investment hubs in Moscow and accelerators that uh, form the ecosystem around the fintech innovation in Russia. Um, first of all, uh, we need uh, to uh, pay or we need to recognize the role of the government and basically the Moscow government in what they do to make the Moscow really smart city. Uh, for instance, um, the, the high level of the adoption of the fintech services may also um, be uh, because of the rapid development of the electronic government services and the huge in, in inclusion of the different uh, social groups in using uh, the services online. So, uh, for instance, from the uh, what well has already won done by the government of the Moscow is that first of all it's invest hugely in uh, city improvement and innovation so you could see how much okay, dollars uh, were already invested and um, also there are a number of the citizen engagement platforms that uh, we are there custom of citizens may not only to use their services provided by the government, but also may contribute their ideas and um, be involved in the development of their district or, um, okay, for instance, starting from the parks, uh, starting from the how the transport uh, system should be organized and some other things. So, uh, another, um, another part that also provides a nice foundation for the uh, increased adoption of the fintech services is uh, the infrastructure development. For instance, in Moscow, there is a, a free Wi-Fi system in parks, in public transport, in metro. Uh, 4G coverage is really excellent. And uh, also, we may talk, as I mentioned before, the really high scale of uh, automation uh, and uh, basic social service facilities. You could get an access and do many things online. Uh, the um, uh, digital wallets are quite um, uh, popular and are used. And for instance, some technologies are used to uh, manage the, for instance, public transport in a more efficient way. So it's like um, sensors, uh, GPS navigators, and some green initiatives, and okay, park zones. So uh, the technologies are now uh, introduced non not only in fintech sphere, but also like across the all areas that basically may require such technologies and where efficiency could be improved. Um, for instance, Moscow is quite rich and could be really rich from the perspective of the uh, industrial complexes and technological parks. For instance, we could see that um, 40 industrial complexes has already been built and uh, 33 technology parks. Uh, one of the examples is uh, Stragino Park, Nagatina Park. Uh, a couple of the others. So these parks, they uh, provide the place for innovation. Again, not only fintech innovation, but in different areas. Uh, for instance, some parks, they test uh, their driveless uh, buses and cars. Um, other parks or initiatives that were uh, projects that were launched there was like uh, the wounds, uh, where the new technology, how to cure wounds, like four and uh, three, four times faster than traditional way. Um, some parks, um, what they, the, the projects they hosted, for instance, this development of the special uh, coverage for um, Moscow bridges, for uh, some uh, buildings, which helps to protect against the graffiti, against the bad, bad weather, and against some um, advertising posts. Uh, but of course, the key role in the innovation uh, 
belongs to Skolkovo um, Institute of Science and Technology. Uh, for instance, now Skolkovo hosted, uh, hosts more than uh, 100 and uh, 1,800 resident startups. Uh, the areas are quite diverse, starting from biomedicine, IT, uh, space, uh, energy, nuclear technologies. Uh, the grants may be provided up to $4 million, quite significant amount. So the startups, they uh, enjoy their certain uh, tax um, uh, exemptions uh, and also, for instance, they uh, receive the constant and uh, mentoring and consulting services from the Skolkova Foundation. Uh, also, I should mention that uh, startup initiatives are supported widely in the different universities of Russia. For instance, uh, well-known universities like High School of Economics uh, has business incubators like residential programs where the High School of Economics provides the uh, open uh, working spaces and assistance from some professionals uh, for startups. Um, also, uh, has uh, High School of Economics goods. Uh, this is like more support oriented on the projects which are aimed at uh, solving some social issues and business projects. And for instance, we could see also that um, uh, High School of Economics Business and Incubator is also participated in some um, competition, international competition, and were ranked the seventh in uh, the world ratings in uh, 2000. 2008. Um, similar incubators were launched in uh, Lihanov University, Moscow State University, some technical universities. So, uh, and for me personally, being a, like a professor in university, I would like to say that uh, students are so motivated, so engaged, and they are so um, enthusiastic about testing new things, discussing new ideas. So, it's really nice that. Uh, within the university, they may uh, get some support from their mentors, advisors, supervisors, and also professors, and they may work as a team. Um, also, um, the accelerator and uh, fintech investors, venture investors, uh, they um, select the projects, some potential projects for their investments. For instance, Internet Initiative Development Fund uh, offers some accelerated pro programs and provide uh, financing. Uh, some of these accelerators, they provide platforms uh, for, uh, okay, where their uh, fintech startups may um, picture themselves, they may um, somehow promote themselves and um, and also prove that their idea is viable and to talk to investors. And the last one, uh, we are closer to the end, uh, to think a bit about the future and the adoption of the fintech services uh, in Russia and what uh, potentially we may lead to. Uh, of course, the adoption of the fintech services is much higher in the huge cities. But also, as I mentioned, uh, more because more and more uh, government services are now delivered online, and uh, like this is a really nice trigger for the uh, citizens of Russia to be engaged uh, and uh, to somehow start using online platforms. Uh, and this lays also the background for the development of fintech services. So starting with the government services for some of them, and then. Um, more sophisticated financial services. Uh, the Moscow has a surprisingly quite uh, high adoption rate, 35%, and this is even uh, higher than in New York, in New York uh, 33. Uh, for instance, when you communicate with the young people, with the like uh, middle-aged people, you could see that they are quite um, proactive in adopting new ideas, testing new devices, testing new products. So that's um, very nice about the Russians that they uh, don't reject innovation, but they try to first of all understand how to use it, how they could benefit from that, and then what maybe improve it. So, um, and also we could see that uh, because of the digital municipal adoption 
uh, rate, the Moscow is now a top world's five digital mega policies. So this means that how, um, to what extent the population, the citizen of Moscow use the digital municipal services. And um, as for the, for instance, uh, remote banking, it's also quite high, 40 uh, 43%. So among the most demanded areas are still online lending, payments, and money transfer. Uh, for instance, there is also nice statistics that uh, consumer awareness of the fintech uh, products are quite high. Only less than 1% of the uh, respondents, they told that they know nothing about the fintech services, for instance, like online payments. Um, and it is also nice statistics that within the different age groups, like between 19 and 34 years old, active users are around one third, 30 percent. But um, among the mid-aged uh, people, like 35 and uh, uh, 54, uh, their active users are even higher, like 40 percent. So. Um, and uh, probably uh, one more thing is that uh, Moscow is really among the top 10 countries with the highest number of the Bitcoin uh, automated teller machines. Uh, for instance, uh, again, the um, apologies that the data is not 100 up to date, but in uh, 2017, there were already 24 uh, ATMs okay, crypto ATMs that were installed in hotels in Moscow, and the number of the devices uh, is increasing uh, over the times. Uh, however, of course, uh, there are some hurdles that um, uh, somehow uh, doesn't allow to uh, develop this uh, area in a quite rapid pace. It's the regulatory framework and the high price of the equipment. But here again, we may see that the crypto um, topic is uh, very like popular among the young people, among the businessmen, among middle-aged people. They try really to understand what's this and how uh, they could benefit on that. Uh, we already talked about the key drivers uh, on the um, Russia fintech market, so that uh, there are different innovative hubs and programs that support uh, development of the new ideas and support startups. Also, we could see that demand is gradually creating through the uh, increase of the internet coverage and engaging uh, citizens uh, to use the online services, for instance, municipal services. Also, the regulatory initiatives, and there is a huge uh, piece of work that government now working on to um, to lay the foundation for uh, financial innovation sphere, uh, talent development, universities, uh, again, some accelerators, master classes, they are everywhere, and uh, the capital. So uh, among the top barriers that we may say, uh, for instance, of course, this sphere also requires uh, higher or even more investments, right, to speed up its growth. And of course, the geopolitical risks uh, now really come into force, and some foreign investors might not be quite keen because of these uh, political tensions. They might not be willing to invest heavily in uh, the Russian startups. Um, so another barrier is the lower purchasing power of the population, uh, because, uh, for instance, as for the payment and remittance services, that may be uh, okay. However, for personal planning, um, wealth management services, uh, this is probably uh, really the factor that will not allow to develop the services at the really rapid pace, the low purchasing power. So, and some things should be already also done even more uh, in, um, in the sphere of the regulation and some adjustments of the uh, tax system with the, um, to provide the special, um, how to put it, uh, the special uh, favors to startups who are involved in the fintech innovation.
Uh, for instance, uh, their perspective is quite promising. Uh, for instance, by 2035, it is forecasted that uh, the volumes of transactions in US billion dollars were really significant, right, in comparison with the 2020, so very rapid uh, growth. Uh, the same with the financing, uh, this means like obtaining loans online, and even, um, okay, like wealth management is also is expected to develop at the rapid pace. So uh, according to the EY data, Statista and Cambridge Center of Alternative Finance. And we are now approaching all, almost to, already to the end. Uh, for instance, in the end, I would like to um, familiarize, I'd like to represent to you the results of the survey that was uh, conducted by the Higher School of Economics Institute of Statistical Studies and Economics of Knowledge. Uh, and also the Banking Institute of the National Research University. So uh, what they did, they asked their respondents the question, so what do you believe? What um, are the potentially, uh, potential areas? What should be the future of the fintech development? What are the most promising technologies? And for instance, uh, 52% of the respondents, they really stress the importance of the development of the um, unified system of the identification for clients. Also, they do believe in the creating a single uh, ATM network, so not that every bank has its own automated teller machines like Sberbank, Alpha Bank, and you are just looking for uh, the machine of your own bank, but uh, yes, it should be like um, a really single uh, network. And also, uh, it is possible to share data like international customer data exchange and some legal stuff. Um, for instance, among the most promising technology, they put the special focus on the black blockchain technology. Uh, again, it's not 100% that we're talking about the cryptocurrency. Here we're talking about the even um, support services and back office, um, which uh, is believed to uh, benefit on the significant cost cutting and cost savings uh, if the um, blockchain technology may be introduced to uh, automatize uh, some processes. Um, and also everyone believes that conventional traditional banking operations should be simplified and uh, they should think how to make this um, serving the customer on a more like intuitive, uh, intuitively faster with the not uh, much uh, time spent on I don't know dealing with some documents, even physical documents. Uh, and the last point that I would like to finalize uh, today is that um, yes, for instance, um, we do understand that fintech innovations is something like a new future, and it's really shaping the banking and financial landscape. Um, however, not uh, all the financial professionals do understand that. For instance, I have statistics like globally that only 13 of traditional financial uh, professionals believe that uh, this fintech is a threat to their business. However, the fintech professionals are more insightful and they do really believe um, in the technologies and they see where they could cut some businesses from the traditional, for instance, banking services. However, when we look at the <clears throat> table on the right, uh, we may see that for different types of the financial professionals, the different technologies play a greater role, right? For instance, for uh, investment bankers and wealth managers, uh, the uh, artificial intelligence is a quite important technology that they are going to introduce. Uh, for wealth management, the robot advisors is also paramount because of the heavy regulation. They suffer huge costs and uh, robot advisor technologies could really help them to save. Uh, much money. Uh, also for retail bankers like uh, digital, providing loans digitally or online and all this stuff or technology is viewed as the quite important. Okay, uh, whenever uh, you are consider yourself to be a 
fintech professional or bank professional or I don't know just uh, business um, I really engage I really how about it uh, I really encourage you to think about the future and to learn more about financial technologies and innovations and probably uh, how they could be implemented to plan your uh, financial life uh, in a proper way and uh, what good these technologies may do for your future business. Uh, thank you very much for today. That's uh, all from my part and it was really a pleasure to cover such a nice and exciting topic today. Thank you. hope you enjoyed that as well. Um,